What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another Friday live stream, as we usually do on these fine Fridays, where we get together and talk about nice GNU lispy goodness uh, as a community. It's a lot of fun, and I enjoy doing these things. Uh, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today. What happened was I plugged my computer into my streaming setup. Oh, well, why does that get choppy? Anyway, I plugged my computer into my streaming setup and restarted it and started Emacs back up. And uh, basically, I had to deal with uh, a number of syntax errors in my configuration because I've been conf converting it all over to setup.el and I just happened to leave things in a bad state. So it took me about five minutes to restart Emacs, maybe six or seven times just so I could get everything cleared up. But here we are. Hopefully, we won't have any weird problems uh, as we go on today. So uh, let's just pray to the uh, the Emacs gods that this is all going to work out. Let me grab some stuff here just to make sure that everything is ready to go. And I'll say hello to some folks. Um, not sure what I want to do. I want to kind of show the YouTube chat at the same time because... This uh, restream chat is very slow. Things propagate really, really slowly, and it's uh, very annoying to me. Let me actually try this really quick. Actually, no. Yeah, let's... Oh, there we go. That's good enough. Shouldn't have done that, but that's fine. Pop out chat. Let me drag this over to the other screen. Ivan says, finally, YouTube sent me a notification on time. That's good. You know, YouTube is a little bit unreliable when it comes to these things, I found. Come on now. All right, let's do that. And then I'll put the YouTube maybe up there. We're going to see dual chat today. It's going to be very, very weird. Come on now. There we go. There's one. Let me drag this down a little bit, maybe. Oh, can't do that. See, this is what happens whenever I'm late. I can't set things up the right way. Let me also make this a little bit wider. Okay. So anyway, let's just say hello to some people really quickly. Uh, I can't even see. Uh, Ashin, Crazy Chicken, uh, Pavel, Ashraz, uh, Robert, Daigo, Valentino, John, Vinicius, uh, Reynas, uh, Vladislav, uh, Marcel, uh, uh, Vipin, Brad, Paul, Mark, Thokal, the Christer, Alejandro. Uh, yeah, a lot of people here today. Ivan, Eric, AV, Captain No Beard. Captain No Beard says, I've had this tab open since last night. It, well, it must have been you, the person I was seeing, who was just waiting for the stream the whole time. Thank you. Uh, Bagarcel, uh, Pranaya. All right. Let's see. Hey, Andrew. Glad to see you here today. Thomas. See, Pranaya says, I have a request. Rather than configuring Emacs with third-party packages, would you be interested to do a series with built-in packages? Yeah, that's actually something I'm intending to do, but I have not got around to it yet. There's a lot of stuff that I need to actually get around to. All right, hold on one second. Let me get the other restream chat up. We're going to have dueling stream chats today to see exactly how uh, slow the restream chat is because it's been really frustrating, I think. Let me do this right here. Control C, enter. Oh, no, not yet, not yet. Next up, you floating toggle. Okay, so. Hey, Grant. Grant, I saw your presentation at EmacsConf last year. It was nice. Where, let's do that. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's see if that actually works. Uh, if you also want a good uh, blog post about using the built-in packages, check out the couple of posts that um, uh, Carthink did. Let me see if I can pull those up real quick without blasting everything on the screen. I have no idea what tabs are about to pop up right now. That's going to be fun. Come on, cute browser. Let's go. Let's get the day started. Lots and lots of tabs. Come on, let's go. I got too many things happen on the same laptop at the same time. I apologize, people. I'm I'm sorely unprepared today. It seems. I guess uh, this is a good opportunity for me to talk about something that I did just get yesterday, which is a Pine Phone. If you haven't heard of Pine Phone, it's actually a um, it's a phone that runs Linux, and I'm trying to get it set up with a few different uh, OSs that 
I found that are pretty interesting. So I'm hoping that in the future, I'll have a chance to talk about this uh, a little bit more. And hopefully I can get find a way to put geeks on it at some point too, which would be pretty awesome. Come on now. All right, thank you. So Carthink blog. Sorry, it's taking a long time to get to exactly where I want to be. Uh, yeah, I said Carthink. I know his name is Carthic, but we're looking for Carthink. Maybe he links to his website here. Anyway, the whole point of this is to get back to the point where we talk about the fact that he wrote a blog post or a couple of blog posts called uh, Emacs with uh, batteries included, I think. Anyway, is Karthik in the chat? Does he have a link to his, his blog post? I'm wasting time here. Okay, let's just wind it up, wind it back, wind it back to the beginning and start over. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I didn't miss anybody here. Ivan says Emacs Elements YouTube channel did a similar thing introducing built-in packages. Yeah, check out Emacs Elements. Uh, oh, okay, carthinks.com. Thank you, Ashraz. Okay, so follow the link that Ashraz has here, carthinks.com slash software slash batteries included with Emacs. All right, so Emacs Droid. Yeah, well, we'll see. It'll be Emacs phone. It's definitely going to be Emacs focus whenever I can finally get something set up there. Hi, Anoush. Okay, so let me just get back to the actual point of what we're going to do here today. Um, SC Live, here we are. Oh, wow. Interestingly, that it seems that the restream chat actually shows up faster than the YouTube chat. Oh, okay, is it because I'm on top chat? Why don't they just do that to begin with? Okay. <laughs> Great way to start the day. Anyway, so today we are going to be taking a look at the new Geeks Home feature that just got moved into or merged into Master uh, in Geeks, which is really awesome. I'm really excited about this feature. I think it's going to be kind of a game changer for Geeks because something that Geeks has not had up until now. There's been another attempt at this in the past, but it has not been uh, as successful as the one that's been um, done more recently. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to talking about it today and actually trying to show it off. Uh, so in, in the way of news, I would like to say that uh, Emacs 28 release branch has been created. And that's actually a very big thing because it means we're getting closer and closer to Emacs 28 actually being uh, released as stable. That doesn't mean it's going to happen soon, but we're going to get some pre-release builds uh, very shortly. And uh, there are also, I think this is a uh, mailing list post from Eli asking for people to um, try out the new branch. The, come on, are you going to load it? Uh. CEO, thank you. Crazy Chicken says, do you know if Nick's home is doing the same? I think it's the same idea, basically. Uh, so yeah, Eli sent an email to the uh, Emacs, e Emacs Devel mailing list saying that they've cut the Emacs 28 branch and he encourages people to track who track the Emacs development to switch to that branch to test it out, try to find any bugs uh, because we're trying to get it stabilized now for a stable release sometime later, possibly this year, maybe early next year. It really just depends on how long it takes to stabilize that branch. But it's great because it means that uh, it's we're very much closer to having a stable release of Emacs 28 out that has a lot of great new features. There's been a ton of development in this uh, release release cycle. So uh, even if native compilation doesn't get turned on by default, which it won't, they've already said it won't happen. Uh, there's so much other stuff that's coming in Emacs 28 that we can't even list right now that uh, is going to be really helpful. So as soon as that comes out as a stable release, people should start getting it in their um, distribution package managers, which, which is great. And also you could download it for Windows, etc. So... Uh, great news, uh, I think. It's going to be a really cool release. And uh, also, I was going to add the PinePhone thing here, but then I end up having to talk about it anyway because my browser tabs popped up. But yeah, PinePhone is um, very cool. I have only just started using it. Um, the hardware is pretty good. The camera is not so good, but I'm, I didn't buy the phone for the camera. I'm really looking forward to trying to get like a full Emacs environment on the phone. We'll see if, that, if it's actually possible. So uh, I'll have more to say about that later, I think. Crazy Chicken says, do you have a video on features in Emacs 28? Not yet, but whenever uh, Emacs 28 stable comes out, I'll try to do like a roundup of what the most interesting features are there. Um, let's see. And also, before we get into the content day, I would like to ask that if you uh, are here today, please like the stream because uh, it helps with the recommendation algorithm. And if you're also, if you're watching the recording and you enjoy the recording in this video, please feel free to like the video. 
And uh, if you're new here today because we're talking about Geeks Home and you haven't seen this channel before, definitely subscribe to the channel because I make a lot of videos about GNU Geeks, GNU Emacs, etc. And I'll be talking more about Geeks next year because I'm going to go more in depth about Guile Scheme and, I'll, and try to tie that back into hacking on Geeks itself, uh, you know, including your conf configuration, but also potentially making changes to Geek system and um, going even deeper with customization because there's a lot that I want to do with it that I haven't had a chance to do yet and making some videos might be actually a pretty good way to uh, kill two birds with one stone. So uh, definitely sub to the channel and keep a lookout for those videos uh, late this year, maybe early next year. We'll see. And uh, as always, if you uh, really enjoy the work that I do, please consider supporting the channel. Click the link below in the description or in the chat there. Uh, you can go to the System Crafter store, pick up some merch, or you can also uh, sponsor what I do on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, etc. Uh, and that would be very helpful. I really appreciate that. And thank you to all of you who are here today who are our sponsors or have bought from the System Crafter store. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, my bindings are not working at the moment. It's probably because of the aforementioned configuration switching. So what is Geeks Home? Uh, Geeks Home is a very cool new feature of Geeks, which allows you to apply configurations to your user level config, config, I guess. You apply configurations to your user account with all the same benefits that you get from Geeks system, like being able to install packages. I mean, installing packages isn't very... Uh, surprising, I guess, but um, typically what you do as a user with Geeks right now is you either use Geeks install to install packages just by typing out individual commands, or you use a manifest file to install a set of packages into your main profile or maybe some secondary profile. Uh, what this would allow you to do is have package lists configured for your user level account in Scheme and apply that in a more standardized way so that maybe you have all of your packages being installed and uh, be able to get the other benefits that I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, also, being able to place files in your file system so that you could actually uh, link your dot files into your home directory using Geeks Home. I don't exactly know how this is gonna work yet, but that's part of what we're gonna try to figure out today is how we can actually make that work. Uh, also, configure your programs with Scheme. Um, one of the things that you can do with Geek system is configure programs or services on your machine using scheme forms. And you would be able to do the same thing for your user level programs and configuration as well, I think, which is kind of cool because it means that instead of having to go edit a specific configuration file for a program, uh, you could have a, a scheme function or you know a service definition that is able to help you to do that so that it's easier to tweak your configuration for various systems. So if you think about it, if you have multiple machines, it would be much easier for you to be able to apply changes to your configuration, like let's say changing the font that you use or the font scale or maybe the background that you use for something or anything like that. You could change those uh, independently based on which machine is the uh, configuration is being applied to, but at the user level and not at the system level. So uh, you have a lot of uh, functionality there that is possible that is harder to do with other things uh, or harder to do by yourself, I guess, uh, without some other tool. Um, you can also run user level services. So let's say you want to run the sync thing daemon in the background or some other kind of daemon uh, and you don't want to run it as a system service. You could actually run that as a user level service with uh, Geeks Home. And also you get all the other functionality of Geeks that you would normally get from um, the system configuration side of things, which is being able to roll back your configurations, uh, roll forward your configurations, um, and even use Time Machine so that like if you wanted to pull down your uh, configuration repository at a specific point in time, like six months ago, and apply that same configuration, you would get the same configuration back. In theory, at least. It really just depends on how much you really devote to letting Geeks Home take care of your entire user level configuration. But that is possible. So it's kind of interesting to think about that, uh, that capability. And uh, one really nice benefit of this is that it can be used on foreign, foreign distributions. I say that in quotation marks because what that really means is um, as we've talked about in another, another video on this channel, you can install the Geeks Package Manager onto any other Linux distribution like Ubuntu or Arch Linux or whatever you use. Uh, and now because of that, you can use Geeks Home on those distributions as well because this only configures things within the scope of your user account. So you install Geeks Home and then you, sorry, you can install Geeks, the Geeks Package Manager, then you can use Geeks Home to manage your entire uh, user configuration. So if you think that installing Geeks is too hard or your your hardware is not very compatible with Geeks, you can just install some other 
uh, operate it, or sorry, some other distribution of Linux, and then use Geeks Home to manage your entire user level configuration and install programs and services for your user level config from Geeks. So you could basically get the same benefits and the same kind of setup that you would get from a full Geek system, but only for your user level uh, config. Uh, Paul asks, uh, is it supported on Mac OS? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon, probably. That's one thing that Nix has as a leg up over uh, Geeks in this case, is that you can use Nix on OS X, but you can't do that with uh, Geeks, I think. Crazy Chicken says, even OS X? I'm not sure about that. If, if I'm wrong, please tell me, because um, I don't think that uh, Geeks is usable on Mac OS at this point. So, um, one thing that's interesting to me is that this is something that could easily replace some of the configuration work that I do uh, with Org Babel. So I have kind of a complicated Org Babel uh, configuration, literate configuration setup where I'm actually templatizing certain parts of my configuration. And depending on which machine is loading the config at that moment, different variables get put into the configuration files for configuring things like I said before, like the font size or the font that I'm using or anything like that. So I might be able to change what I've been doing before with org mode and move that into Geeks Home instead. Uh, and it might be very interesting to see how that could work. Uh, it might be more stable than what I've been using in the past. So uh, it might help me to avoid some of the problems like I had today where my configuration broke right before the stream and I had to restart Emacs 15 times. So. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this plays out uh, for my own configuration and see how things um, evolve over time. So I'm very excited to play with this. Uh, there is also a manual page already for the home config and it's pretty good. So if you want to open up this home configuration page on the Geeks manual, uh, it gives you quite a lot of information um, about uh, what the Geeks home command does and this whole concept of home environments. And also uh, how to how to configure it, how you can find services that are specifically made for the home configuration, and how you invoke it. So we'll be taking a look at this documentation today to figure out how to do things. And I'll tell you, uh, I have not used this yet. I'm going to be trying it for the first time today, so we're all going to be figuring it out together. So if you have any suggestions at any point, please feel to pipe up. Uh, I think Andrew is here today, the the actual author of Geeks Home, uh, which is really cool. I forgot actually to mention that. Um, let me put that information here. So Andrew Tropin actually has a YouTube channel as well, where, uh, he talks about, uh, GNU geeks and Emacs quite a lot, does live streams pretty frequently, I think. And a lot of this sort of lead up to this thing being developed was actually coming from what Andrew was doing in his own work for his own configuration. So, uh, Andrew took the initiative to develop a geeks home system that uh is you know comparable to well in my in my to my understanding is comparable to what you would get from from nick's home manager or whatever it's called uh so we can all be very thankful to andrew for uh for d doing this work and actually getting it merged into geeks which is a pretty big thing i mean this is kind of a big feature to be going into geeks so uh, uh congrats to andrew for getting that merged but uh, i just wanted to point out andrew's youtube channel so that you can go check out uh that channel I think uh, Crazy Chicken's message got blocked for, because they thought it was a curse word, but it was someone's name. So thanks, YouTube. So go check out uh, Andrew's channel on YouTube and give him a sub as well. Uh, let's see, anything in the chat? Uh, Paul Victor says, long time Nick's home manager user excited to get into geeks. So definitely, Paul, if you see anything that, um, or if you have any questions, definitely feel free to raise them if you, if you know about things that work in uh, Nick's home manager, because uh, I would like to know you know, from your experience as well, what things are supposed to work. Let's see, in org mode, only star key to create bullets, but we'd like to add more keys, please, please help. I don't know if there's gonna be a way to do that. I'm not sure if that's possible. Let's see, uh, I'm sure I would assume Alpine would have similar issue, probably so. I think they're they're not using glibc, they're using muscle C or something. Um, Gavin says, do people configure Emacs with Guile using this? I, I wouldn't do that. Um, the thing that I'm curious about, which we'll go into uh, in a little bit, is for things like your Emacs config, where you are going to be writing the configuration in the language that's meant for um, configuring it, how does that play with uh, Geeks Home whenever Geeks Home is going to want to try to control your configuration? Uh, is it going to overwrite your Emacs config? What's it going to do? <clears throat> 
Crazy Chicken says that would be Lispception configuring Emacs and Guile. Yeah, hopefully we won't have to go that far. Shadish says, uh, E-Lisp for Emacs, Guile for Geeks, Clojure for Java, Lisp is taking over my life. Well, you know, Lisp is pretty good. Lisp will have its day in the sun. Let's see, check out uh, Andrew Tropin's uh, YouTube channel. Okay. All right, so let's try it out. Like I said before, I have not tried this yet, so we're both going to be, or we're all going to be learning together today. We're going to see how well this goes. Um, so I'm going to pull up a VM that I set up yesterday. This is um, basically the image that you can download from the Geeks website. You can just go download the uh, QMU image if you want to. Let's see, Geeks downloads. <clears throat> if I could type today. There we go. So if you go to the Geeks download page, uh, you can actually download this QMU image if you don't want to go install Geeks yourself. If you download this and you create a new VM in Vert Manager or whatever you use for QMU VMs in uh, Linux, then you are able to just boot up a, a live system for Geeks to try this out. So it's a very easy way to try it if you want to experiment with it a little bit. And also you can just download the ISO and install it into a VM or install it onto your machine if you want to. Uh, if you're interested in installing Geeks system, or even the Geeks Package Manager. I've got a, a number of videos about that on the channel. Just go check out the uh, Crafter System with the new Geeks video, uh, video series. Uh, Bork, I don't think that what you want to do is possible. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Andrew said that, uh, that he was going to be connecting from mobile because he's going to be commuting right about now, so he may not be uh, fully available. <clears throat> Crazy Chicken said, wait, some, someone already lisped Zig. Uh, oh, really? Wow, that's cool. I like that idea because uh, Zig is pretty nice. Okay, so let me try to set up a, a or start up the VM. Um, I did not do this in advance because I didn't have time. So we're just going to do it live. All right, let's move this over here. <clears throat> and I'm going to start my Geeks VM. And we'll see how bad this drags my uh, CPU down in a second. <laughs> Gavin says, I've seen people using Nix to configure NeoVim, but in my opinion, it seems like a good way to lose out on a ton of cool features that come from adding Lua and VimScript. Yeah, I think that for more powerful programs, you're not going to want to uh, configure those with, um, with Geeks because it's going to be too much translation and i think that it's not necessarily intended that you would configure all programs with with geeks i think you, what you would do is you know have your configuration files for many of your programs and then create symbolic links to uh to those files and we're going to figure out how that is supposed to work today as well why is this taking so long to boot up about to find out if we're going to have a problem with this i mean i have uh <clears throat> oh here we go I have Geeks Home ready on my own machine as well. I haven't tried it yet, but the, the command is available. So if we had to, we could just do it there if necessary. Uh, CT says, I want to use EXWM for Geeks, but I can't even get past the white screen. Um, if you follow my uh, uh, Emacs desktop environment series, it should work in Geeks as well. Crazy Chicken says, do you, do you know if any... Anyone know if they lisped Vim script? Well, I think that if you use Fennel in NeoVim, then that's probably the best of uh, both worlds. Uh, Gavin Freeborn here has a video on that. Okay, so. Pavel says, I like the idea of the config uh, back and forward, but I kind of have that already with dot files in the VCS. So I'm curious what uh, Geeks Home may bring. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Paul says, I have used Home Manager for everything else except my Stump WM and Emacs configs. That makes sense because many of the other programs you configure, you're not going to change the configuration very frequently. So uh, it makes sense that you could have a more stable static configuration that could be configured using the language of uh, the, the home system that you're using, like Nix or Geeks. But, you know, Lisp based programs or configurations are really just programs. So you don't really want to make those um, compatible with uh, some other language, I think. Because you already have the same functionality of being able to execute code and do higher level logic. And you can't really do that with a polybar config. Well, I guess maybe, is it 
Python based config or is it just no, 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 it's, it's more of an INI style. Uh, Andrew says, I'm mostly with you, but can't type fast enough for my phone. By the way, I white, write Emacs config in Guile. OK, well, we're going to have to see how that looks. I might have to go uh, check out your uh, repo. I think I know which one of this. OK, so uh, first of all, <clears throat> let's take a look at the documentation that I had pulled up. And let's see. So let's just read a little bit from this first. I know that uh, reading uh, on a video is pretty stupid because you can read it yourself, but uh, let's just see if we can grab the high points here. So it says Geek supports declarative configuration of home environments by utilizing the configuration mechanism described in the defining services chapter, but for the users dot files and packages works both on geek system and foreign distros and allows users to declare that all the packages and services that should be installed and configured for their user. And once you've written up a file containing a home environment record, such as a such a configuration can be instantiated by an unprivileged user, meaning you don't have to have sudo or root privileges with the geeks home command. So this is the whole reason that it's able to work on a foreign distro uh, because you you install geeks there, but you're not really configuring your system with it. You're just installing the geeks package manager and build agents, and then you're running geeks as a normal user. So to do all this, you have to be able to run it as a normal level user. <clears throat> the user's home environment usually consists of three basic parts, software configuration and state software and mainstream distros is usually installed uh, system wide, but with GNU geeks, most software packages can be installed on a per user basis. Let me move this over here, actually. All right, so uh, let's see. <clears throat> Packages on their, on their own are not very useful in many cases because often they require some additional configuration. Usually config files that reside in your config folder, .config, or other directories, everything else can be considered state, like media files, application databases, and logs. So I think that uh, primarily Geeks Home is concerned with uh, software and configuration. Uh, and it says that state is something that can be concerned with, but it's not really developed out yet. So it's another thing that we are going to uh, see happening in the future, I think, as things get developed. Uh, using Geeks for managing home environments provides, provides a number of advantages. All software can be configured in one language. This gives users the ability to share values between configurations of different programs, which is pretty cool because it means that, let's say, if you want to use JetBrains Mono everywhere, uh, one way you can do that is to <clears throat> set that up in your Geeks Home configuration as a variable, like my font, and then pull that into the configurations for all these various programs. Um, so your configuration for your system becomes more like a program as well. And you have all of the benefits of the scheme programming language to help build up your configuration for your various programs, which is pretty cool. It's almost like you have a full programming language for templatizing your uh, program configs. Uh, a well-defined home environment is self-contained and can be created in a declarative and reproducible way. There's no need to grab external binaries or manually edit some configuration files. So um, just as with uh, Geek System, you never really edit anything in your etc. folder, your slash Etsy folder. Uh, with Geek's Home, in the optimal scenario, you also wouldn't hand edit the majority of your Emacs configuration files. <clears throat> so kind of an, a different way to look at configuring your system you no longer are you know editing individual files or installing the programs even you just have a single configuration written in scheme that's able to apply all that uh let's see case says and so instead of uh how many what is the deal with this uh commification of this number i can't even tell what number that is let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine was it 10 billion 10 billion environment environment variables one scheme file yeah of course it's, it's better right if it's Lisp, it's obviously uh, objectively better. Uh, every Geek's Home reconfigure invocation, a new home environment generation will be created. And this is what actually allows you to roll backward to a previous thing or previous um, uh, install, I suppose you could say. So if you ch make a change to your configuration and it breaks something, you could easily roll it back with uh, one command without having to go re-edit your configuration files or check out your previous commit in your .files repo or anything like that. You can just do one command to roll it back to the previous thing, which not only rolls back the 
configuration files themselves, but also the programs that were installed as a result of in installing your latest home configuration. So there's multiple dimensions on which you have safety in your config so that you don't get into a situation like I was today where I broke something and I wasn't able to get back to a working state very quickly. Uh, Sergey says, uh, is it really... It is really interesting idea to use Lisp as main language for configuring system. Uh, what about not free drivers for NVIDIA or Radeon video cards? You should check out the non geeks uh, repository. If you go, if you search for non geeks, N O N geeks, and uh, that repo, that channel for geeks actually has drivers for NVIDIA. Uh, and, and it looks like the system Crafters wiki shows up as the second uh, result for that, which is awesome. So you can check out this non geeks installation guide on the system Crafters wiki if it loads. Yeah, and uh, that will tell you how to set up the Nine Geeks repo and some interesting information about that. But also, if you just go to the Nine Geeks repository on GitLab itself, there's information about how to set that up, and there are drivers for AMD and NVIDIA devices there. So that's typically the way that you're going to get drivers for things that are not supported by Geeks itself. And the reason why Geeks does not contain these drivers by default is because uh, GNU Geeks is a distribution that follows the free software distribution guidelines, which basically says that you can't include anything proprietary in the kernel or in the packages. It all has to be free or open source software that doesn't have any kind of binary firmware blobs, etc. So if you want to get that kind of software or those kinds of drivers, you have to go to a third party channel like this non geeks channel. Let's see. <clears throat> Uh, Joshal says, how would Nick's Home Manager compare to Geek's Home? Well, uh, we'll have to find that out by trying to use it. Go away, 1Password. All right, so uh, it is possible to manage stateful data with Geek's Home. This includes the ability to automatically clone Git repositories on the initial setup of the machine and periodically run commands like rsync to sync data with another host. This uh, functionality is still in an experimental stage. So this is where I think... Um, this is, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the chat for a second. This is where I think your dot .files repo can come into play here. You could actually pull down your dot .files repository and then have it sync to a particular commit and then sim link that into your home folder if you wanted to do that. But it sounds like the ideal case is that you're sort of letting geeks take care of that for you uh, and not really relying as much on having dot .files that are checked in. I'm not entirely sure about that though. I mean, technically speaking, this configuration would already be part of your dot .files repo, so a um, little bit of a chicken and egg issue there, so I'm not exactly sure how that also works, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so let's go to the next page, the clearing your home environment. Let's see what the actual code looks like. Uh, so the home environment is conf configured by providing a home environment declaration in a file that can be passed to the geeks home command. A simple setup can include bash and a custom text configuration like the one in the example below. So what we're gonna do, is take this configuration here and plop it into a file inside of uh, the VM that we're using. Let's see, does this come with Emacs installed? We're about to find out. Um, doesn't look like it. How about we just geeks install Emacs? <coughs> Yes, I agree with Gavin. Uh, Bork, go to the Discord, click the systemcrafters.chat link in the pinned comment in the chat, and uh, ask their question there, and somebody would, would be able to help you. It's better than in the chat here, because we can't really help you very easily on this, uh, on the uh, stream chat. Dustin says, uh, I'm starting on Geek's Home for my configuration today, an immutable home directory crazy idea. I'll be keeping my side effects uh, using my computer in a state directory. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't think it makes your entire home directory immutable though. I think that it only handles things that go in the config folder, if I'm not mistaken, or other things that you explicitly tell it to place at certain locations. So I don't think your entire home folder becomes immutable, <clears throat> excuse me, immutable in that case. You can still have other folders around that uh, do other things. However, it is interesting to think about what you could do, like cloning repositories to your project folders or things like that. Um, Kind of interested to see what that's going to look like. All right. Hopefully this won't take too much longer. Um, while we wait on that, let's say, take a look at the docs again and see if there's anything uh, interesting we can gather from this. Oh, it's in this window, actually. So um, this looks very similar to what you would get from a 
um, normal Geek System config. We pull in modules for various different things. We can see now there's uh, a new GNU Home module. There's also some modules under GNU Home Services. And I think that there is a concept of home services that are separate from your typical system services that are made specifically for using Geek's Home. And I expect that a lot of people will be checking in new home services for a variety of different things into the uh, Geek's repository so that we can all benefit from these various different services that can configure certain types of applications. Now, when I say service, it actually doesn't mean like a running service daemon or something like that. It could just mean some piece of code that activates some behavior in your configuration. So there's like a higher level concept of service in Geeks. And that's why they uh, point to the um, defining services part of the manual. It talks about what services actually are and how you combine them together in an operating system declaration. But uh, this actually applies to home configuration as well. So you're defining services that go into the home configuration. Let's see about the installation. Okay, we're still applying graphs. Let's let that do its thing. I see uh, Captain No Beer saying, installing software on a live stream is a bold move, Cotton. Yeah, well, you know, we're, as you saw on Wednesday, we like to take some risks here. All right, so <clears throat> almost done with that. So um, what we see is that there is a home environment form here that creates an instance of the home environment structure. Uh, you can put what packages you want in that list. So you could have like Emacs, a list of Emacs packages, etc. Uh, and also your list of services there that apply configuration. So um, Andrew is telling me in the chat, uh, state management management allows you to create project one, project two repos, sync email folders, etc. on a new machine, and you'll be ready for work almost instantly. That sounds amazing. I mean, I would love to be able to have that uh, set up. Uh, also, still in early stages of development and available only in the RDE channel. So Andrew has a repo called RDE. So there's probably some uh, experimental stuff there. I actually do want to check that out. <coughs> Hi, Sherry. Sherry, tell me, what do you know about the gas prices in 1965? All right, so. Did I miss anything here? Okay. Hi, Palms. <clears throat> so let's see if uh, Emacs is done yet. Yeah, it's, okay, finally done. Let's see if it shows up in our applications list. No, all right, we're just going to have to run it the, the old fashioned way. Okie dokie. Uh, let's get rid of this terrible, terrible theme. Uh, load theme uh, deeper blue T. <clears throat> cool. Is this font visible enough? Text scale increase. There we go. That made this a little bit better. Hmm. In 1965, the gas prices would probably be about 98 cents. That's very interesting piece of information. Where did you find that? Okay, so uh, let's see, home.scm. I'm just gonna create a file called home.scm. Ah, I need to have <clears throat> uh, Spice VD Agent installed. Uh, Spice VD Agent, can I install it like that? Because I need to be able to paste into this VM, otherwise we're gonna have trouble. Crazy Chicken said, let's download do things. Let, let's, let's not go that far. We're gonna just do what we need to do today. I guess we could actually do that to be honest, we could just do that as part of the uh, home config. So we'll try that in a minute. Okay, so um, Spice VD agent. Let's hope this works today. Now I want to copy and paste the config. If this doesn't work, I'll just open this up in a browser inside of the VM. <clears throat> just happened oh I don't have my key binding set up paste 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 that's that's what happened I don't have evil paste it didn't work oh no I think it's working it's just taking forever hi Patricio why don't you use Emacs geeks uh well I haven't installed it yet on this machine is it really gonna take this long to paste something come on all right let's let's just do this the right way do we have any web browser installed? Yeah, I tried this before and it didn't work. There's no like ice cat or something. Jeez, I do not want to install that. Control Y to paste. Yeah, that would work if uh, pasting worked at the moment. 
Okay, so um, let's install VimB. I don't know. I, I'm trying to get something very lightweight that's not going to be a, a long thing to install. Geeks install VimB. This live image does not have much on it already, as you can see. Hopefully it doesn't try to build WebKit GTK. Let me check out this chat here. Inso yeah, install on Google Chromium. Pavel is trying to troll the stream right now. Ah, EWW. Actually, that's not a bad idea, in fact. Uh, good idea, Grant. Okay, so so this this is why I have people in the, uh, in the stream here, because obviously I'm not smart enough to think of the real solutions. So the address was geeksunu.org manual. Okay, so we'll just find it in the development manual. Stop. EWW. Uh, Geeks.gnu.org. Okay. So manuals. Whoa. I'm not a very uh, apt user of EWW. So you'll see me doing some stupid things. Taking a sweet time too. Yeah, Nix is cool. And Surf would also work, but uh, I think Surf also similarly depends on WebKit GTK. Come on, which one's gonna finish first? Is EWW gonna load first or is uh, this package gonna install first? Respect the Taco says 200 IQ. Let's see. Uh, Andrew says, most of the home services still not upstreamed yet. Most of them are work, work in progress. Uh, so for now, there's not much things here. Uh, check Geeks Home Search dot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was looking for that earlier. Like, how do I see all of them? I was going to go dig into the code if I had to. Okay, let's try VimB then. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to go to... Uh, Okay, let's see if it loads up. Oh, Jesus. Web view crash. Always, man. I'm so sick of this. VimB had this problem all the time. Ah, yes. And Edge Crusher is also correct. So let's try the info system. We're, we're going to go further and further into big brain plays here. All right. So is Geeks Home even in this list? Home. No. Hopefully it has the latest. Home configuration, boom, look at that. Okay, so who was that that gave that suggestion? Uh, let's see, Edge Crusher 19 is the winner. All right, so let me go and try to find that config. All right, uh, declaring the home environment. Now we're gonna go, oh geez, there we go. We're gonna mark this and copy it. I really need evil mode because I don't have the, uh, the bindings for all this burned into my memory. Yeah, I should, I should install that, but I'm in the middle of this now. I'm committed. All right, so what's the key binding for copying? I forgot. You know, I made a video about this, and I don't remember. So this just goes to show you that uh, the things I tell you on this channel, I don't take my own advice. Is it uh, Alt-W? Save text. All right, hopefully that works. Uh, was it... Um, Home.scm, cool. Let's drop this in. <clears throat> cool, at least we have that working now. Let me do indent region. I think that it, that is actually this key binding. Shut, no, come on. I also don't have my normal key binding set up, so a little bit disoriented. Okay, let's save that. Now, let's pop over to uh, eShell. Come on now. Control X, O, Control X, B. E shell. There we go, cool. Thank you, folks. All right, so now we can finally run after all of this. Uh, Avocadora says, can this replace Stow? Uh, yes, I think it possibly can. And it might be like, you know, 100 times better than Stow. Um, 
So I think we just need to run uh, Geeks Home reconfigure. Let's double check that really quick. So Geeks Home command. There's an invoking Geeks Home section here. And um, Geeks Home options, uh, reconfigure, build the home environment described in file, and then switch to it. So I think I just give it the file. Let's jump back to the buffer there. Geeks Home reconfigure help. I think it's just the file path afterwards. Okay, so reconfigure. Yeah, did, I asked for help on that command. Whatever. Let's just try it. Geeks home reconfigure home.scm. Let's see what it does. So I think what's going to happen here is it's going to try to apply that configuration, which we'll take a look at a little bit more closely in a second after we see what it does. It's doing a lot of things. Finished updating sim links. Um, it also does some work to set up fonts, which is pretty cool because I do some manual stuff uh, on my system for that. Let's take a look at the folder structure. So we have dot profile that's now pointing to a location in the GNU store, which is interesting. What's actually in that file? Uh, that is the home environment setup. So uh, we have this home environment variable, which points to your geeks home folder. And then it sources the setup environment script, which probably has a lot of stuff in it for uh, all the things that you have set up in your config. So let me actually uh, cat that file. So dot geeks home slash setup environment. Uh, so we have a lot of environment. Whoa, a lot of environment variables that get set there. All right. How about we do the right thing and just open it as a buffer in Emacs. So dot geeks home setup environment. And we will make this the one buffer. Okay, so we're setting our Geeks profile to our home profile. So that's one thing you don't have to do anymore if you have been doing that manually in your profile scripts already, setting up your your, uh, your Geek pro Geeks profile. Sets up XDG data deers, sets up the info path, the man path, similar things that happen if you load a profile in um, from a manifest that you've installed. Uh, sets up a lot of uh, config directories. And uh, that's pretty much it. But I'm sure that more things will be in here for services and whatnot that you have to start up. It's probably going to initiate the uh, startup of services. So if I were to, uh, let's say, open up a new terminal or a new, come on, <clears throat> let me turn this to open up a new login shell. Or in fact, hmm, if I log out, I wonder if it's going to shut down because it's a live CD that boots straight in. Let's just try this. Um, where is the settings for this? Preferences. I want to turn it to login shell. Uh, you run command as login shell. Close that. We'll close both of these tabs because we don't need them. And then we'll run the, the terminal app again. Okay, so um, echo home environment. Okay, so that is set up. Everything's there. Um, echo xdg. Well, that's all that stuff's probably going to be what we expect it to be, but that's fine. Config deers. Okay, it's cool. So um, let's do something else. How about we... Do we have Emacs? Yeah, okay. Interesting that it still pulls that in. I would have expected that um, because it wasn't in the home config that it wouldn't show up anymore, but maybe it's because I haven't logged out completely. All right, so uh, packages list HTOP. Okay, so is, maybe we have HTOP here now. Yeah, HTOP got installed. That's cool. So how about we also put in, whoops. Man, the, the lack of, uh, whew. The lack of evil mode is killing me here. I'm going to fix that right now. We're going to go here and then type in Emacs and Emacs evil. I think that's what it's called. We're going to find out right now, actually. Let's go back to eShell and then once again run. Wow. Do I not have eShell open? Edit in Vim. Well, I don't have Vim installed right now. Okay, so we're going to run uh, Geeks Home Reconfigure again. And this is going to have a second. Ah, good. So it told me that I, I was missing an import, which makes a lot of sense because I need to pull in the code for uh, the module that has the geeks 
packages in it. Not only that one too, Geeks, oh, sorry, GNU packages, Emacs, but I also need GNU packages, Emacs, XYZ, I think. Then we'll go back to eShell, run it one more time. <clears throat> All right, taking his time here, but that's typical for geeks running in a VM while I'm making a live stream. Okay, so we're installing um, Emacs Evil, Emacs Minimal. So all this is gonna be in our home profile now. And if I remove it from my normal Geeks user profile, I think that should, uh, it should still be available after that. But we'll, we'll try a couple of things and see what happens. Robson says uh, XYZ, that's sort of the naming conv convention in Geeks for a module that has a lot of related packages to one larger program or set of programs that um, are not core to the functioning of that program. So it's basically like the miscellaneous packages, but that's where a lot of the Emacs packages for um, various different uh, things that you would use actually live in the Geeks repo. I'm missing a lot of the, the chat from uh, Twitch, I think, because it doesn't show up really nice here. I see restream bot and I can't tell it is, it's case sending these messages. A lot of stuff happening here, but uh, we're making some progress. Cool, so it's finished. Now, uh, if I close and reopen Emacs, I probably need to hash my setup first. Oh, maybe I can launch it from uh, here. Let's see, Emacs load path. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> I wonder if it's, let's see, what is usually in the Geeks Home folder? Okay, there's a channel file, I like that. What's that got in it? Okay, normal normal channel. On first login, that looks like a script. So what if I do cat uh, Geeks Home, home uh, on first login? Uh, there's some scheme in here, that's nice. Setting environment variables, it seems. <clears throat> Provenance, configuration.scm. Okay, cool. So let's run Emacs again. And then I'm gonna try to run um, require evil. Nope. But the profile itself, let's see. Setup environment. Does it set Emacs load path? I don't see it. Does it pull in my, yeah, it pulls in my home environment slash profile. Okay, let's look at that. Um, Where did I see the folder? Oh, that's in my actual home environment slash profile. So What? That's slash profile? No. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't actually have that, which is kind of weird. Jeez. Yes. Now I'm losing my ability to think clearly, apparently. Okay, so profile, it's there. Is that a folder? Yes, okay, that's that explains it. So then we have et cetera slash profile. So this is a different thing entirely. And this is where Emacs load path gets set from. So I probably need to log out fully. Let's try that now. Log out fully, see what happens. Let's log out. Some of this stuff needs to be set at the uh, user level profile. Does it restart? There we go, good. Okay, so now what we can do is um, cat, or no, echo, home home environment. All right, so it's all here. Echo, Emacs, load path. Um, that seems correct to me. So now if we run Emacs from here, <clears throat> then I should be able to require evil. Great, so now evil mode is available and I don't have to stumble around anymore. Uh, let's also do one other thing, .emacs.d init.el, just so we don't all go blind. Load theme, deeper, blue, T. Okay. 
So now let's experiment a little bit more because that was pretty cool. Um, we can also roll back to a previous generation as well if we wanted to, but I'm not going to bother with that right now, but we will play with that in a moment. So we'll go back to the home folder and then uh, pick up home.scm. Uh, let's take a look at what some of the other stuff is in here. So we have the list of services. Uh, the first service we have is the bash service type. And what that does is configure bash uh, using the geeks home bash service type. So it, it knows how to set up the bash configuration files for uh, a geeks home environment. And uh, I think there's also one for Z shell if you want to use Z shell instead, but this one at least will set it up for, for bash. Uh, and then you can also pass in this home bash configuration to uh, configure it further. So things like maybe if you want to put some specific text into your bash profile file, which we can actually check here, bash profile, it's going to have this uh, line that you put into the scheme file. So I think all of this was uh, generated. And then this part is something that gets put in based on what you want it to do. So <clears throat> I think it's in addition to what's already there. I would have to look up the documentation though, to be sure. Um, and there's probably other things that you can, other parameters you can pass in here, but um, uh, I don't know exactly how in depth this is right now. Crazy Chicken says, are there any other shells? Uh, well, let's actually find out. So one way you can find out is to uh, pop open uh, eShell and then use uh, Geeks Home Search. So let's search for Bash. Uh, okay, so home bash shows up. That seems to be a package. Uh, what about Z shell? So uh, Z shell is also there. I'm going to press dot. Uh, so we have a few different things here. Let's actually do this in a real shell. Because, oh, is it shells? Cool. Uh, Anush V says search, search for shells. So we see, oh, there's uh, Z shell. There's fish. I think that must be something else. Z shell profile. Yeah, um, we need V term in here because this is not E shell is not up to the task uh, for paging. Let me pull up just a normal terminal and do it there instead. So we're going to run geeks home search shells. So we see home shell profile fish Z shell bash. So those are the three options you have at the moment, but anybody could add their own options there as well. Uh, by contributing to the geeks repository. All right, so um, we could try using Z shell as well if we wanted to. In fact, maybe let's just give it a shot really quick and see how that goes. If we use home Z shell service type, it may not work because a system configuration may not have Z shell set up, but let's just see what happens. It, it probably won't work. Let's see here. Home Z shell configuration. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that because if we break this system, then I might have problems getting back into it. So the idea would be that in your system config, you would have to set up Z shell as a possible shell. I could be wrong about this, but your login, your, your user login has to have a Z shell, I believe, for it to work correctly. All right. So the next thing we were looking at is uh, simple service. Uh, this test config, this is a home files service type which I think is a simple service for just copying files into your home folder. And what it does is copy a file called config slash test.conf, which we don't really even have, but it will move it into, oh no, this is actually inline file content. So plain file, temp file. So they were actually writing the contents of the file right here. So in fact, this file should exist right now, dot config slash test.conf. So if we look at dot config test.conf, that content is here. So within this configuration, we were able to say, uh, let's generate a file called test.conf in the .config folder and then uh, symlink it in there. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. So what else can we find then? We, we need to look at what other services are possible to use. So what we need to do is uh, geeks home search dot like Andrew told us before to look at all of the Geeks Home packages that are currently available. So there's certain things like base directories, home activation, run on change. That's interesting. To run if the specified files have changed since the last generation, extension should be a list of lists where the first element is a pattern or a file directory that is expected to be changed. Hmm. One thing that sounds interesting is a symlink manager. I don't know if this is something you could use to link your own dot files somewhere. 
provide an update symlinks script, which creates symlinks to configuration files and directories on every activation. If an existing file would be overwritten, back that file up first. So that sounds like something that could be used like Stow. Let's take a look at that. Provenance information. Some of these things seem to be um, related to the inner workings of the home command. So they may not be things you would use directly. Home profile can be found in geeks home slash profile contains packages and configuration files that the user has declared in their home environment record. So these are things that you put in your config basically. Shell profile used for environment initialization of POSIT compliance shells, home services, uh, build the home environment top level directory, which in turn refers to everything in the home environment. Okay, so there's a lot of machinery here in the packages. Font config, that's something that's pretty interesting if it can generate the font config stuff for you in your uh, home directory. Anoush says, is it possible to change keyboard, keyboard keys remapping? Well, it might be if you had a service that sets up XModMap or any other program that can configure key remappings. Uh, you could definitely do that here. In fact, that's a pretty good idea, actually. You could have a nice little uh, scheme-based syntax for saying, I want to remap caps lock to control or whatever else that you want to do. Uh, that's a very um, good example of a service that could be written. And it's something that we might try to write another time. All right, home files. Uh, configuration files for home programs that will be put in home slash files. So what does that folder actually have in it? That's interesting. Pull up dear ed. And then dot geeks home slash files. <clears throat> All right, so we have bash profile, bash rc profile. What is config? Font config test.conf. Okay, so um, sounds like what we saw before in um, home.scm right here where home file service type, we're configuring that and we're saying that the config slash test.conf folder gets linked to, uh, hmm, where does it even say that it goes to slash config? That's interesting. So bash profile, bash RC config profile. I wonder if it's like a special folder path. We can find out by looking at the docs probably. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the docs. Um, let me get out of here really quickly. Can't escape, can't escape. Okay. Sometimes control alt is just not working. That is really insane. Seems you're doing great for fancier services, add RDE repo or copy the sources code from it. There's also links to people's configs in the readme. Yeah, we may have to take a look at those uh, to see what else is possible. Let me um, see if I can escape. There we go. Thank God. Uh, let's see here. We wanted to go back to the cute browser window. There we go. Oh, that's why, because I have caps lock turned on. Okay, so I was looking for docs. Come on now. Let me out. Looking for docs on the um, Geeks Home. Let's see, home dash. No, they're not, they're not here in this part of the docs yet, it seems. And for whatever reason, I can't use my scroll wheel anymore on my computer, my keyboard. Shell's home services. Okay, Imcron home service. Essential home services. Mostly for internal use. So yeah, you can set environment variables too if you want to, which is pretty cool. Look, it looks like if you copy the simple service, you can set whatever uh, invars you want in your profile. So you don't have to do that inside of your bash profile anymore, which is pretty nice, I think. In fact, you could generate those if you had a reason to. Let's go um, up here, home services. I must have seen this already. Oh, okay, so they even have full docs about which ones are available. So you have like the shells, uh, profile configuration, bash home service. So here's here's the other thing. So we have environment variables you can set for the bash home service, contents of bash profile, the contents of bash RC, uh, the logout script. That's pretty interesting. Um, 
And that seems to be it aside from the uh, Geeks defaults we already saw. So add sane defaults like reading, et cetera, slash bashrc, coloring output for LS provided by Geeks to bashrc. So Geeks defaults being true gives you some extra stuff in that. Uh, a Andrew says, getting out of coverage and get we'll get disconnected soon. Thanks for dropping by, Andrew. Uh, maybe another time I can have you come on the stream and, and we can talk a little bit more about it. That'd be pretty cool. All right, Z Shell Home Service. Um, yeah, same stuff, like just basically being able to add stuff into the various different profiles. It doesn't seem that the fish service is described here, but probably because the docs haven't been added yet. Uh, mcron, if you wanted to do like cron type stuff, I like to use mcron because it's another thing that's uh, written in, or the, the actual cron files are written in Scheme. So if you want to write Scheme based recurring tasks, you can use mcron for that, but you can also set up the, um, mcron configuration as a list of expressions directly inside of the uh, scheme file for your home config, which is great because you have that all in one place instead of having it in another configuration file somewhere. Uh, Shepard the same way you can have a Shepard configuration for these services that you want to start. So if you have Shepard config, then you have your list of Shepard services. So um, these are probably the same services that are available at the system level, I'm guessing. So there's a, a service for sync thing, there's a service for other types of things that you might want to run as demons in your uh, user account. So the things that you would use in your geek system could possibly also be used as shepherd services at the user level. So that's another thing to keep in mind. All right, so let's see, that's everything for this part. Um, home service is not necessarily something that has a daemon and is managed by shepherd that's basically what i was saying before in most cases it doesn't it's a simple building block of the home environment often declaring a set of packages to be installed in the home environment profile a set of config files to be sim linked and a set of environment variables to be set by a login shell so a home service can do all these things and more basically uh, there's a service extension mechanism which allows home services to extend other home services and utilize capabilities they provide uh, so, for example, declaring mcron jobs, uh, declaring de demons by extending shepherd, uh, and commands that will be invoked on bash by extending the bash home bash service type. Add commands which will be invoked on, let's see, is it, you, can you run commands with that? Not sure, but possible, I suppose. All right, that's cool. Let's see, what else do we have here? Shells, home services, uh, home services. Yeah, we were in that list. Anything else interesting in the home services list here? Uh, run on first login service type. Generates a guile script, which is expected to be executed by the login shell. Only executed if the special flag uh, hasn't been created. And you can extend it with a G expression. Interesting, there's another type of um, service home activation service type which runs on every geeks home reconfigure which leads to the activation of um the home environment paul asks uh, do you even need dot files anymore if using home services um probably not it depends on how far you go with it i think that if you spend a lot of time setting up your configuration with home services you could configure all the applications that you care about in fact you could probably just have pre-canned copies of your base configuration files. So um, what we saw before in this config that we uh, pulled over here is a simple service for the home file service type. And we have a list that says there's a file called config slash test.conf and you're passing in this plain file here. You can also use other things aside from plain file. You can use like local file, which will pull in the contents of a file on disk. So if you have your home configuration with a set of files next to it, which are like your uh, pre-canned configuration files for programs like let's say Polybar, uh, you could pull that in using this command to then have that place your Polybar configuration wherever you want it to go. Now, I guess the question you might ask yourself at that point is, well, what if I have a whole folder of files that I want to set up in my home configuration? Well, this is scheme after all, you could write a loop that could list all the files in the directory and then, you know, copy all those things into the home file service type. Uh, but there's also a sim link service. And I don't know if there's some way you could exploit that to just do automatic sim linking to a whole folder structure. Uh, that's something that Andrew might be able to answer for us. But um, I think that you could definitely have a full geeks home configuration that doesn't require typical dot file management, or you might be able to have a, a combination of both. 
uh, depending on how you set things up. So let's see, what, what else did I want to look in today um, related to all of this? Let me go back to my notes. So there's, there's a few questions that I actually want to answer uh, as we move through this. So first of all, what is, there's, there's files that this thing is going to place into your home folder. What happens to them if those files already exist? And I don't know if we had that already. There probably wasn't a .profile file already. But let's say I delete the profile that Geeks Home created. I create my own bogus .profile file, then run Geeks Home reconfigure. What happens to that existing file that I had? Does it delete it? Does it move it? What does it do? Uh, let's go, let's go take a look at that really quick. So let's go into e shell. Um, ah, I'm so used to the way that I use Emacs that it just causes me trouble. Come on, man. E shell. Thank you. All right. So we're going to delete dot profile. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, find file dot profile. Um, this is bogus. <clears throat> Then I'm going to go back to eShell, and then we're going to run uh, Geeks Home Reconfigure again. And we're going to let it do its thing for a moment, and then we're going to see what happens to that .profile file because... Oh, okay, so it already finished because it already had everything built, which is cool. So let's look and see what happened to .profile. Well, this one is now relinked back into the uh, store. Hold on a second. Is eShell installed? No, okay. I saw Z profile here and I was wondering if that was uh, something. Uh, but what we can see here is that there's a couple of uh, folders here called Geeks Home Legacy Configs Backup. So it sounds like it's making backups of the files that you uh, had before. If I look into this 16331085516 folder, uh, it doesn't show me anything because that was a hidden file. If I use LSAL, we can now see that the dot profile file that I had created before got backed up. So one thing that you can keep in mind here is that if you ever run <laughs> cat AL, if you ever run geeks home uh, reconfigure on your existing configuration, it's going to back up everything that it, it steps on. So if you made changes to files, um, it should back those up for you so you don't lose them. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but the thing is, you'll have to go clean up these folders from your home directory because now you've got uh, all this random stuff in here, like these these two folders that you can see. So that's something to keep in mind, but it's good to know that Geeks Home is not going to cause you to lose things in your configuration, at least. And you can see that everything else in this folder is not actually being affected by the Geeks Home configuration. Uh, the All these other files desktop.emacs.d, everything else, they're not actually changed. So it's really only the stuff that's relevant to your configuration that gets affected by running the Geeks Home reconfigure command. Slalom Skater says, I want faster internet. Geeks pull takes forever. It can't keep up. Yeah, well, sometimes it takes a while to download uh, substitutes, that's for sure. Okay. What else did I want to take a look at? Uh, Paul says, as far as, as far as I know, home manager aborts the switch if it finds an existing file in the file system. So it sounds like Nick's home manager will abort in that case. Uh, it won't do something automatically, which I, I can see benefits in doing it either way. Uh, okay, so I was asking, uh, can manifest files be kept separately and loaded into the home config? Well, I think the answer would be yes there. So let's see, what does my own manifest stuff look like? Let's see, FDM. Come on, taking forever, Emacs. So I'm pulling up one of my own manifest files. So let's say, let's do this. Ah, I can't copy and paste, I think. We're about to find out. Let's go back to the VM. Otherwise, I'll just write it manually. Specifications, arrow manifest, okay. So I'm going to create a, a manifest.scm here. Oh, great. It pasted it. Awesome. Clean it up a little bit. Let's let that be. Let's get rid of these. Uh, and let's drop another thing in just to uh, make sure that we believe that it's working. Uh, what's a good package? Emacs dot. All right. Emacs dash. Uh, I don't want to put in org. It's too big. Small package I'm thinking about here. What par edit. Okay, 
So this is a specifications manifest file. I wonder, let's see. Guile load. Uh, that's going to work. Read file. I probably need to make that a module, but then I have to put it in my module path, which I really don't feel like doing right now. Guile reader and guile, whatever. Guile read file evaluate. Yes, is there like a load file? Okay, load. Load file name and evaluate its contents in the top level environment. Hopefully that's going to work. So let's just give that a shot really quickly. And that's in what module? Doesn't say. I can pull up the, um, in the terminal, pull up the geeks REPL. Load file. No, load from path. What does that do? Let's try it. Uh, Manifest.scm. Unable to find manifest. What is the current folder? Did I save it? Come on now. What happened? No changes. Okay, so manifest is good. Is it like this? Uh, load manifest SEM. Okay, specifications of manifest unbound variable. Uh, which module is that in? I know, I may be rat holing here a little bit. It's probably actually another function in Geeks to do this as well. GNU, sorry. Would it be Geeks? Nah. I'm trying to think if there's a good way to do this. Manifest. Load. Let's see, installing. D. It's the guile manual. Okay. No, no, no kidding. I'm not going to spend much more time on this. So I'm looking for the geeks manual, the index of the geeks manual. Programming index. Come on, come on, come on. I think if I find a specification arrow package, Setting Geeks Transformations, Geeks Packages. Oh, it could be in Geeks Packages, I suppose. Here we are. Let's see if that works. Who knows? Okay, whatever. Use modules, GNU packages. Uh, Nicholas says, I think it's in GNU packages. Thank you, yeah. Use... Go back up one level. Use modules, uh, GNU packages. Spec. Oh, really? You didn't like that? Use modules. And then uh, spec. There we go. Specification to package. Is that right? Specifications to manifest. That's not in this list. Ah, that's because I did the wrong thing. Specification arrow manifest. There it is, right there. It's not telling me where it lives. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, that would be something to look into. So basically, to roll back to what I was trying to do uh, to begin with is see if we could reuse the existing manifest file 
to uh, plug into the home file. So let's say we have home.scm and we want to pull in packages from different manifests. Uh, the reason why you would want to do this is because someone like me, I'm generating manifest files for different things. Like let's say the packages that I want to install for desktop applications or even my Emacs packages for my own Emacs config. And uh, I don't want to have to have my code edit this file to be able to put that set of packages together. I would like to pull that list of packages in from a secondary file that could be used here in this packages list. And also for a given machine, I don't want to pull in all of my manifests. I may only want to pull in manifests for certain types of applications. So, you know, every machine would have Emacs packages in my desktop environment packages, but it wouldn't have the packages for video editing or music editing, et cetera. Only certain machines would have that. So having a way to pull in only certain sets of packages based on machine would be uh, a nice thing to do. I guess the other alternative is to have um, my own modules in my home configuration that I could pull in that has that list of packages there that could just be, then be added to this list. So because this is scheme code, you could do it any number of ways, uh, but I was just trying to see if there was something already for using existing manifest files. All right, so what about uh, the next thing? Can we put system and home configurations into the same file? Yeah, I think that that is possible. So uh, the idea being, uh, let me show you what my system config looks like. So I'll pull up, uh, actually, let's do this dot config slash dot geek, sorry, no, geek slash system slash uh, zero cool. So uh, the configuration for one of my systems looks like this. I have an operating system record here, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it inherits from the base operating system that is defined in my base systems.scm file. But what if I wanted to have not only the operating system uh, definition here, but also my home configuration as well for the specific system. That way I can do sy system specific configuration for uh, various things. So what I will, what I would like to do is have an operating system config uh, and the home config in the same file so that I can use a script to apply the home config from basically the same file. So if I go back to the VM, I could drop in the, no, I don't want a keyboard macro, I want to paste. There we go. I can drop in the operating system config. Okay, so I've got that saved here. It's probably going to complain that I don't have a bunch of modules uh, pulled in though. So let me go and, hmm. This is going to be fun. This is going to be real fun. Okay. All right. So I am going to pull in all of those things. Uh, you know, hmm. I wonder if I can just do a bare bones system config. Cause I don't want to have to, um, pull in all this other stuff. Map devices, let's list map devices. I'll get rid of the inherit. It's probably going to complain that I don't have other things here though. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to do this. I think I'm trying to think if there's another way I could demo this really quickly, but this is probably not going to be a way. Anyway, what I think is that, um, because this is just a module file, uh, what we're doing in these files are defining variables or I guess you could define a variable or you just have a, a top level home env environment defined. I think that you could have multiple, if I'm not mistaken, if somebody knows I'm wrong about that, let me know. But um, the idea being that you should be able to have both an operating system definition and a home environment config in the same file. Uh, if, if not, then you could definitely have separate files for the system versus home config or something like that. But it stands the reason that you would be able to have a home environment and an OS config in the same file. And the reason why you would do that is to have all the configuration for a single machine that you use in one place. Uh, now, when you in use Geeks Home to install your home environment, it's only going to look for this home environment config. It would probably just ignore the OS config. But uh, I don't know. It might, it might not. Uh, that would be a question for Andrew if uh, Andrew shows up again. All right. So next thing that I was interested in would be is there a way to pin user level channel configurations easily? So we see here that there is actually a channel file that you can see in the geeks home folder and under channels.scm. So there's a channel file here 
And I think that Geeks Home itself even takes a parameter for channel files. <clears throat> oh man, I'm having uh, key binding issues again. Yeah, so e shell I want. <coughs> so in the Geeks Home command, um, I think we can pass a channel file just the same as we do anything else. So channel. No. Geeks Home reconfigure. Will it tell me the parameters if I don't give it anything? Yeah, whatever. Okay, it may be uh, the time machine that you have to use for that. So if I were to use Geeks Time Machine and then pass the Geeks Home command to that, then it would probably pull up the right channel. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I wonder if it automatically just picks up the latest based on what you've pulled. So maybe maybe the channel configuration is separate from uh, Geeks Home and it's just based on whatever your current uh, Geeks Describe channel list is. So Geeks Describe. Uh, so we only have, wow, that's ugly. We have uh, Geeks at this particular commit of the Geeks repository. Uh, so you would probably have to add the other channels, but then it seems to save those channels into a channel file, but that wouldn't necessarily be connect checked into your uh, repository. So I'm not sure exactly how that would work. It's possible that you could um, use that same, whoops, man, I, I think I keep hitting caps lock and it confuses the config. Um, you could use the same simple service uh, with home file service type and possibly drop a channel config into your local geeks home folder. But uh, that's another thing I would have to ask Andrew about. So uh, let's do something else really quick. Let's look at uh, whoops, the page or the, uh, let's see, A, B, C, D, W, R, D, E repository. And this is the repository that Andrew had mentioned before. Uh, it's called um, uh, Reproducible Development Environments. And I think there is a, this is basically a Geeks channel. You can look in the GNU folder under home. Oh, there's even an examples folder. That's nice. Home environment.template. Let's see what this has in it. Maybe there's something useful we can see. Try to zoom it a little bit. So um, home services version control. That's interesting. Uh, we have some stuff for, oh, here it is. Okay, map specification package plus output. So this is a way to pull in a set of packages based on their names. And what does that come from? Probably GNU packages. Yeah, I think we saw that before. Map specification package output. So we're just calling the normal map function with this function as a parameter and then the list here. So that answers that question. All right, there's Andrew. Andrew says you can have OS and home environment in the same file, but it's necessary to create a dispatching mechanism, for example, based on the in, uh, value of the env bar. Check configs at SCM examples. Okay, cool. All right, so um, we have our package list. We have a list of services. Uh, we're, we're setting uh, keyboard layout, which is cool. Uh, looks like that's probably using uh, xmod map, I would guess. You can set what your keyboard layouts are, which is great. I, I would like to use that. And also the um, other options like control, no caps, that kind of thing. And simple service, uh, set brightness on first login. So we're setting the brightness value. And then there's another thing here for home state service type. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can clone repositories using state git, it seems and also use uh, rsync to sync files from a particular place. Uh, another simple service for putting test conf. Okay, this is a little example joke here. Another git service type, uh, home git configuration, config, um, we're pulling a git repository from a particular place. It sounds like we're also using GPG to authenticate. Interesting. Mcron service, SSH service type. So, huh. I guess you're configuring specific SSH hosts for whenever you need to SSH into them. GNU PG, okay, that's good because I, I would like to use that. Uh, GNU PG service type, <clears throat> and you can turn it on as an SSH agent. I like that a lot. I would definitely use that. So let's see, uh, what else is in here? There's another one, minimal. That looks like the one we already saw, more or less. 
All right, so let's check home services. <clears throat> and there's some more stuff here. There's, there's an Emacs uh, package. Let's check that out. Home Emacs configuration. Uh, oh, there's a list of Emacs packages. I like that. Oh, no, that's a specific uh, Emacs package to use. So that could be Emacs native comp if you want it to be. Elisp packages to install. Uh, whether you rebuild the Emacs Elisp packages, whether you turn on server mode, which is kind of cool. If you want to run Emacs as a daemon with Shepard, you could do that. Um, also drop in configurations to dot config slash Emacs if you wanted to. And then, oh, so you could basically put your whole Elisp configuration as a form inside of uh, this document, it seems like, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so S expression is an Emacs list form, uh, preferably, preferably valid. Uh, but then you can use the G expression form to pull in values from the Guile environment, I think, which, let's see, GX should be string value. The value will be appended to the resulting Emacs list file. So an example would be a bunch of Elisp expressions. You can you can import certain files into it, it seems, I think. Is that right? Load file, local file, emacs test in it, yell, uh, random strings. Yeah, a lot of other examples here. But uh, yeah, you could definitely create your own Emacs list file from within uh, Guile, which is pretty interesting. Cool. That's something worth checking out, I think. Um, we would have to install this channel to do that, but maybe we'll have a little bit of time to try that in a minute. Uh, GNU PG. So let's see. Does it just pull in the actual GNU PG service? Well, it pulls in the package at least. Pen entry flavor, like that. Cool. So this is nice. I mean, to be able to configure your um, GNU PG stuff without having to edit all those files they have, it would be really great. I would love to do that. And the nice thing is that I think I could do this sort of alongside my existing configuration. I don't have to like completely convert over to Geeks Home to actually be able to benefit from some of these things. Keyboard.scm. Um, so it's XKB variables. We're going to use, uh, what is this? Service type home keyboard extensions set XKB variables. Ah, okay. So we're setting environment variables just with the things that are set in there and they're like options that get passed to XKB. So if you know what XKB options you would use, then, uh, you can use this to configure XKB for uh, keyboard configuration. Um, video, what's in there? Video playback and editing. Okay, cool. So you can set up MPV. Yeah, so this is where we get into the point where it becomes clear how you can configure individual programs uh, using Geeks Home. So here we have the ability to do an MPV configuration. Um, so we write out a config slash MPV slash MPV.conf. Um, we start with a configuration. I think we pass in some configuration fields. And let's see what else we have here. Home file service type MPV files service. So it creates these two. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for the record MPV configuration. I don't see any parameters for that, but maybe it's just like a basic config. Web browsers. Which ones can we configure? We can configure IceCat, which is interesting. It's basically the uh, free software version of Firefox. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. So if you want to learn really how all this stuff works, you should check these out. One for window managers. Uh, let's see, which ones are we? Okay, so there's a configuration for Sway. If you want to configure Sway with uh, Geeks Home, there's some uh, capability there to, th to do that. 
xorg config. What does that do? Ah, okay. So you can set some. You can set your X resources using this, which is great because if you use programs that pick that up, like UXRVT, URXVT, then you can set those things there, which is great. Um, version control. I'm guessing this is where we can kind of pull down Git repositories. Ah, that's sort of your Git config at, at a user level. Okay, that all makes sense. Yeah. Okay. This is all just Git, your local user Git Git config. But uh, it's, it's nice to be able to configure that too. I think state is the one that has the Git repository cloning in it. Let's see, state Git. So basically, being able to clone specific Git repositories. Is there an example in here? No. What else is interesting to quickly look at? Password utils. So probably password store. Um, yep. Browser pass integration. Now that would be awesome if uh, Geeks Home could automatically do browser pass setup. That would be amazing. What else? We saw that. What about what's in base here? Generic service. Okay. So we're going to go check out the file that um, Andrew mentioned. It's an RDE slash examples. So configs.scm. Crazy Chicken says, at this point, I'm more curious about what you can't configure with Geeks Home. Well, that's sort of the thing. Because this is all code, uh, you know, it's all Guile Scheme and, and Geeks Libraries, I believe that um, you can do pretty much any program you want as long as you can just write the uh, configuration file for it. Andrew says, I think most of these uh, services will go to Geeks proper, but need to, to finish a few more things related to Geeks home before it. Yeah, that makes total sense. Having all this stuff in Geeks makes it really easy for someone to come in and install not only the Geek system, but then also set up a lot of programs and stuff on their uh, system or their user level configuration as well, which is awesome. Sherry says, uh, I asked Sherry about gas prices in 1965. Uh, what happened on August 26, 2021? 13 double dogs and 200 civilians. I have no idea. All right, so let's see. Mail account. So we have something that says that mails, mail accounts make a simple mailing list. That's interesting. Features, feature user info. New PG. Let me actually scroll a little bit here. I think this is the example that Andrew mentioned that could do OS and home environment at the same time. I think Celtic Orthodox Prayer is actually a person because uh, I've seen them commenting on YouTube videos. Okay. File systems. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not following here base packages a lot of base packages here that's cool interesting oh, okay customizing the xdg user directories i like that that's kind of cool so this is a full user config right here it seems let me scroll up a little bit main features Base services, desktop services, Docker, fonts, pipeware, backlight. Um, dispatcher at the bottom. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Uh, Tmux, Z shit, Z Z Z SH, man, I can't speak. Uh, SSH, Git, Sway. Yeah, so this is like a full user level config, it seems, which is great. Uh, Telega config, I like that. <clears throat> All right, so dispatcher at the bottom. A dispatcher is right here. Uh, let RDE target get in RDE target. So, okay. So basically what you're doing is that you're setting an environment variable that you read whenever this uh, file is invoked and then it, you return uh, whichever one is relevant to the target. So if it's home, then you return the home environment. If it's system, you return the system environment. That's cool. That makes sense. You just have a script basically that is able to invoke it the right way and uh, apply whichever one you want. So I like that. I think it makes sense. Ashraz says that Sherry told me about the events on the 26th on the last stream. I'm a bot. Yeah, I'm definitely a bot. That's true. I'm a very, very high quality bot. 
Okay, so that's awesome. What's in the config here? Sway config. So, uh, Andrew, is there anywhere where you can, where you take an existing file on disk and you customize it using, uh, Geek's Home? Hey, Sasha, good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. All right. Yeah, I don't see anything that looks like it's particularly been um, templated here, but uh, C Z Z S H R C. Okay, where is that one? Okay, so feature Z S H. Where is that defined? Features R D E features is going to be probably here. Okay, so let me take a look at this really quick. I'm looking for anything that jumps out at me. Hey, Foskers. Um, is this? No, it can't be. Let me back up one level. Probably, huh, where is it? Uh, RDE feature shells, okay, thanks. So you're, you're taking in the whole local file. Cool. Yeah. Slurp file G expression. This is a normal function. But I guess that's the way that you pull in that local file. Yeah. So local file is what I expected. And then we were returning it into a G expression so it could be stored in the, in the GNU store, the geek store. Okay, cool. Makes sense. All right. So it's cool to see all this though. I mean, I'm, I'm really sort of encouraged by the amount of sort of configuration that's been done already, at least by Andrew and his config. And I think there's some other people who have uh, configurations that are using similar things like this. Uh, I believe it's right here, like Yachtercell and uh, Krevid Koken. <laughs> I can't read that one very well. Yeah, check out the IRC Crazy Chicken. All right, so this is another home config. Where is the base? Let's see, development SEM. Use package modules, dear inf service. That's cool. Can I program my geeks in Snap using dynamic auto loading power blocks? I don't know. What is Snap? Shells, state. Okay, let's look at state. Yeah, this is where things get like really in depth. I think once you really get into writing a lot of geeks code, uh, it looks kind of crazy, but it actually is super powerful. You can do basically whatever you want. So uh, almost like you can do an Emacs where you are. Uh, able to customize every aspect of the system and write your own custom code for anything really you can do the same thing in uh, geeks paul says is there an equivalent of nix overlays in geeks i don't know for sure i don't think so but uh maybe andrew knows more than me on that topic but i'm still trying to figure out what the entry file is here graphical oh what is it what, no geeks no can't be let me pop back up one level utils channels at SCM okay I like that so various different channels that can be listed right, that's an interesting way to do it services users yocto cell maybe this is the home file yeah this is the one Okay, so this is where the home environment starts for Yacta Cell. 
a uh, list of packages, base packages, lots of different packages for different languages, turning things on and off, all the services to be started. Next service, nice. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Andrew says uh, about overlays, there's an alternative called transformation. So yeah, I think that's the right thing. It's sort of a relatively new feature in Geeks. I have not got to look at that at all yet. Lots of service config in here. So this is a, like what we're seeing is basically like full user configs written in Geeks Home. And you can see all the packages that they install for different things. You can turn packages on and off based on however, you know, they have their package listing set up for that. Uh, the different services that, it, remember in this case, service is not a service that's running. It's actually just a uh, service for creating configuration files and putting them into your home config. Um, and then let's see other stuff. That's a lot of stuff commented out, which is fine. I think this is where the state get. Okay. Cloning repositories under particular directories, which is interesting. I guess you could turn that on and off per machine so that you always have certain Git repos available. And then setting some variables. Cool. So uh, let me just ask Andrew a couple questions. Um, so I see there's a channels. Oh, that, that was the channels file where they're being generated. But if you wanted to set your channels listing using Geeks Home, how would you do that? Is there an example that you know of somewhere that uh, that does that? I mean, I see this one here. However, um, I'm not certain if what's the messaging. I'm not certain if uh, I, I don't know exactly the, the right way to do it unless you put it under Let's see. Which one is that? Is it the uh, this one? Oh, 404. That's not good. Maybe the file moved. All right, let's do GO and drop down to this level. Not there. Let's drop down here. Dot files. Uh, tree channel config. Okay. System home keys packages services. So this is a plain dot files repo, but it does seem to have things at the top level of the dot files folder, various services that would get applied. Channel file. Home folder. It's for a specific machine, it seems. Or to SEM. Okay, here's the home environment. What I wonder is um, where is the channels stuff being hooked up? Packages. Let's check out packages. Okay, we've got a whole list of packages here. That's a way to see how you would do that inside of another way to show how you would do that inside of uh, uh, a scheme file directly. Okay, what's in the Emacs config? I would like to see another Emacs config written in uh, Geeks Home. That'd be pretty funny. Okay, yeah, this one just has Emacs packages. That makes sense. Does Geeks use any hamming codes or digital filters? I don't know. Why would it? Readme. How about we look at the readme? That might help. Ah, just dot files. Okay, that's great. Make file. Geeks Home Reconfigure Core, okay. Ah, okay, I like that. So there's, they have a separate file for their home config versus system config, but that makes sense. Um, keys, cool, that's fine. System config, yeah, whatever. It's in Dear Locals. Ooh. Okay. So I'm still not seeing where the channels file gets applied unless they're moving that manually. I could be wrong about that. I don't think I can search this uh, repo either. Version control. Okay, so you can use simple service plus home file service to generate configs geeks channels.scm, but I keep them in the repo 
and invoke with Geek's Time Machine. Okay. Uh, I like that approach. Yeah, that seems like what I would do too because uh, I've started using like a locked channel file. So if you use Geek's Time Machine to use that instead, then you don't have to worry about what the channel file is because you're always pulling from the locked channels. Okay. Cool. I like that. All right. Um, well, I mean, I don't know how much you got out of watching this today, but I hope at least you come out of this with an, ex an enthusiasm to try out Geek's Home because there's a lot of stuff in here um, that will be interesting to check out. A uh, very promising project for people who want to go even further with system crafting using a Lisp-like scheme uh, because you're really getting to the point now where you're writing your entire configuration using code instead of going and you know dealing with individual file formats for different programs. Now, obviously, if you're writing a service that generates the configuration file for a program, you still have to deal with that program's format. But the goal here would be that people in the community come and contribute to Geeks, write services for various different things, so that it's much easier for all Geeks users to configure certain programs uh, in their dot files using Geeks Home instead of going and just having normal dot files. So I'm definitely gonna do this. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to try it. Um, I don't know exactly how far I'll get in the short term. I'm still doing other things like, you know, converting my Emacs config to set up that EL. But, uh, you know, when I have time, I'll be playing more with Geeks Home. And the nice thing is that it does look like you can sort of do this a step at a time. You don't have to do it all at once. So if you want to experiment with like certain parts of your config, like maybe GPG setup, uh, keyboard layout setup, etc., you could do that pretty safely without having to worry about um, anything else breaking or it just taking over your entire configuration. So. Uh, the other nice thing I want to mention about contributing to GNU Geeks, you don't have to do the FSF copyright assignment. If you go look at the source code files for GNU Geeks, all of them have the list of individual authors in the file. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So it's much easier to go contribute to Geeks today if you actually want to contribute to this effort uh, and help Andrew out and fleshing all this stuff out. So you might see me contributing there, there too, because I can actually do that. So it's a great opportunity to get in on the ground floor of some really cool system crafting uh, technology in the Geeks spectrum. And as I mentioned, you don't have to use Geeks system to use this. You can actually just use it with the Geeks package manager installed on a foreign uh, Linux distribution. So if you're using Arch Linux, Arch Linux, however you pronounce it, Gen2, Ubuntu, Debian, whatever, you can use this to configure uh, your stuff in your home folder and uh, maybe change how you do your dot files. It might be pretty cool. At some point in the future, I'm gonna make a full video on this, but I'm gonna have to spend time with it myself first to try it out and see all the various ways that it could be used. And probably also should wait a little bit into, until the feature stabilizes a bit more. It's been in development for a while, so it's fairly stable as it is now, but you know they're gonna be bringing more stuff online, adding new services to Geeks itself. So it'd be nice to um, have it a little bit more quote unquote stable from the perspective of, you know, it's ready for users to use it uh, on a daily basis. So um, in the show notes for the stream, I'm going to include um, all the links to the documentation to Andrew's uh, RDE repo, which is a channel that you'll have to pull in if you want some of this extra functionality. And also these other two example configurations that you can take a look at. Um, and I highly recommend just going and checking it out if you're interested and maybe try it out. Uh, like I mentioned, if you wanted to download a VM from the Geeks website so you could try it in a VM without having to disrupt your uh, current configuration, then that's totally an option and it might be a very effective way to do that. So I, I recommend trying it even if you do it in a VM so that it doesn't trash your system. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to do anything bad because like we saw before, it backs up all the files that it touches if they're not what's expected. So. Pretty safe, uh, really promising and exciting functionality. Great job, Andrew. I mean, it's really awesome that you took the initiative to do that. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but I sent people to your YouTube page. Hopefully you'll get some new subscribers as a result of that as well. Uh, Paul Victor says, how about setting your wallpaper with Geeks? Uh, yeah, I think that if you use something like Feh, F-E-H, it would be extremely easy to have a service that just runs that on startup uh, on login. So all kinds of things like that are totally doable. Um, and it's nice because you could have any number of packages uh, or any number of home services in the Geeks repo or even in third-party channels that could help you set up the stuff yourself so that you don't have to write your own uh, service for it. So pretty cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm very, very uh, enthusiastic about this. So I'm, I'm glad that it got merged finally so that people can start trying it out. 
and uh, we'll see how things go in the near future. So anyway, um, I think that's going to be it for today. It's been almost two hours here, so uh, it's, that's our usual time frame. So hopefully this was fun. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any comments about uh, about Geeks Home. Also, uh, drop by Andrew's YouTube channel, leave some comments on his videos because he does have more videos like, sort of explaining his mentality and how he does this kind of things. So uh, definitely take a look at that as well. And uh, leave comments on the uh, RDE repo or send emails to the Geeks Devel mailing list because that would also be uh, discussed there too, I think. All right. Thanks so much, folks, for being here today. Uh, check out the links in the description to support the channel. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And then we'll see you back next week with another video in the series of uh, building your website with org mode. So that should be pretty fun. Cool. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. And see you next time. Happy hacking. Thanks.